It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Just on that, we can probably segue into a little bit of draft talk, Bush. We're getting mm-hmm. closer to that part of the year where the draft is on certain fans' minds. Um, <laughs> don't want to dominate the podcast with it, but I think the, obviously you, you're looking at five or six teams here who are completely out of the finals race, so they're looking at what can we get at the end of the year as a reward for this painful season. I'm certainly one of them. <laughs> so have you kept up with the draft at all? Do you have any Not really. Okay. I know about Will Ashcroft a little bit. Yeah. Father son, he's a fancy pick one. He had like yeah. 50 touches one game, which is pretty nuts. But I can give you a snapshot of, of how... Are piecing together other people's work, obviously, uh, as as we all are. Most draft analysis is piecing yeah. up of people's work, I find. Although uh, more so now than ever, we can watch yeah. the game. So I watched WA versus Allies. My God, WA suck. Um, sorry, boys, that's so disrespectful <laughs> to these under 18s who are so yep. much more talented than me. Uh, but let me free phrase that. I don't know. Uh, I don't follow that much, but like I don't remember West Coast. Sorry, WA losing to the Allies in a game. Yeah, before. that's, that's uh, and it was then. pretty uncompetitive too. Um, and, and then we I watched the All Star game as well, which you had like, probably the top twenty prospects playing in that. Yeah. So I do have a bit of an opinion on some of these kids, but pu- putting together like the consensus rankings is what's yeah. helpful. So because that helps you understand how teams are thinking, so that's how you can value yes. them as an asset. Yeah. So this year's an interesting one where. Um, there's no clear pick one. I think there's a bit of a growing school of thought that Will Ashcroft is the man, but certainly among some of the amateur watchers, it's not necessarily always Ashcroft at the top. Mm. So Ashcroft is a father-son for the Brisbane Lions. He's not yet nominated for him, and he's Victorian-based. So there is a little bit of a question mark that he might not nominate him, but we don't really know. It's um, There's no strong rumor yeah. either way. Um, so you got him at the top potentially. It's probably a consensus pick one. There's another kid who's close, isn't there? So there's a guy called George Wardlaw. That's, I think. Yeah, might yeah, be yeah as, a, as a midfielder. I think he's injured at the moment. Might play yeah. later in the champ, so hard to get a read on him just yet. But, but even with Wardlaw and then the next group, there's there's it's pretty tight. So unfortunately, like as an Eagles fan, it's not a great year to have pick one. Like contrasted to last yeah. year, obviously you had teams bidding for pick one. Some of the ridiculous offers of like uh, what was it seven. 15, 26, and 28. It was like, even Adelaide offered for their next, this year's first and yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a clear value placed on pick one, whereas I don't think we're going to get that this year. Partly because Ashcroft, who is getting, he got some love from Toomey this week and talking yeah. him up. So maybe he is that good, but he is potentially father son. So that, yeah. that's not really part of the thinking. So there's Wardlaw, and then there's a young fella called Harry Sheasel, a bit of a Toby Green type. Uh, as I understand it, there's a Matthias Matthias Philippou from um, oh that might have been who I was thinking of that, yeah, yeah. He, he's um, like a big body taller midfielder who's sort of uh, bolted up recently and he's got a late birthday so um, Elijah Sardis was someone who's was a pick one contender a fast wingman skillful uh, at the start of the year he's dropped down and Buzzlinger is uh, probably in that mix as well he's the back ain't he the, key back yeah, from the, WA. WA back yeah. yeah. But yeah, I guess there's a group of about four or five teams there where, sorry, players there where it's just not clear what the order is and pick what the clear best player might not be available. So it's not a great year to have pick one or two, to Uh, be honest. Um, I'm of the view that we could look at trading it. hmm. Um, Because I think Harry Shees or the the Toby Green type player is rumoured to not want to leave Victoria. Paul Bailey Smith, Chad Wingard back in the day. Um, It'd be interesting to say if Ashcroft was more or less motivated to you play the father son card if you guys mm. were the spoon versus north or whatever. Yeah, that that, that is an interesting Cause consideration. He's, yeah. He has alluded to the fact he won't necessarily nominate mm. Mm. Ashcroft. I know that because he kind of wants to be the number one pick and he true doesn't not necessarily attach to Brisbane. Yeah, being Victorian based, maybe yeah. he'd be happy to be playing at North. Uh, mm. I do think that if he's willing to leave the state, why wouldn't he go to Brisbane? Yeah. He wouldn't want to go to West Coast. I don't know what the deadline is for nominating, to be honest. But then what it does change then, let's say he nominates for the open pool, uh, wants to go pick one, and West Coast get pick one. Uh, Suddenly then, I think you could get a bidding war for him. 
in yeah. which case I again want to trade it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So if we get uh, in this scenario, maybe let's say, obviously it'd be great to have Ashcroft, but as an interstate side, we always got to be wary of the kids that might want to go home. Yeah. So if Ashcroft wants to stay in Victoria, that's where we'd be like, okay, Essendon, mm. Hawthorne, who wants him? Yep. And, and then create a bit of a bidding war. But that could be a good scenario mm. for us. Um, but anyway, that's just a bit of a snapshot on, on the top handful of draft picks. Yeah. It, it doesn't appear to be a really deep draft at this stage, um, which is a little bit um, surprising just given logically with two compromised drafts, you'd think there'd be a bit of a concentration of talent, uh, like sort of missed out talent. I suppose we had the mid-season draft, someone mm-hmm. like Jai Colley, uh, who missed out last year and was one of those players. Um, but yeah, so that, yeah, that's, it's shallow and no clear top end. Mm. Um, it's sort of like 2017, perhaps. Uh, 17 was Rayner. Yeah. Um, and then Brayshaw, Chera, LDU, Dow. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, but even the, the whole top five there, yeah. there wasn't a clear... Yeah. I remember like an LDU at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then Brayshaw yeah. came from nowhere and yeah. off the top of my head would be the best player comfortably out of that Ooh, group. yeah. Yeah. So... Mm. Brayshaw. Hopefully we replicate your form there. Um, talk about some trade talk. Again, it's a little bit early in the season, but it's starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, you're hitting some chatter. Some uncontracted uh, players yet to re-sign. Yep. And usually there's, um, where there's smoke, there's fire with some of these. Let's talk about Luke Jackson. He's probably the biggest name, one of the biggest names, yep. to, uh, to be potentially on the move this year after just three years at Melbourne. Yep. Um, Rumoured to come, want to come back to WA. I think he's a bit crazy <laughs> to, to want to do that, but I don't know his situation. But I also think, why the hell would you leave Melbourne right now? What I do- think because Fremantle are backing up a dump truck full of money to his house. Yeah. Um, we will give you this for the next eight years. Well, that's compelling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And you get to come home and be with your friends and shit. I suppose. I don't know. I, everyone's motivated differently. And maybe if I was offered $800,000 a year uh, versus five hundred, I'd probably be thinking along the same lines. But I also want, I th- like to think that I'd be motivated by success and... Fremantle are looking good, don't get me wrong, but Melbourne of the, the article already, like the finished article yeah. already, they're like potentially going to win a, multiple flags here. If I were so here, he I, might get the second flag this year and he'll have two up his sleeve. Yeah, that is a game changer, potentially. Um, so he might have the best of both worlds there. Hmm. But anyway, I guess that wasn't really why I wanted to bring him up. I just thought, yeah. you know, what are your thoughts on Fremantle potentially acquiring him? And West Coast is certainly yeah. in the hunt as well. Well, because we seem to be big game hunting a bit with the free agents and stuff. And apparently there's like, you hear the like, reporting's whispers. Apparently we've assured his management or whatever, where we'll have the assets to trade for him mm. to get it done. Especially because our other targets seem to be free agents. So That seems wild to me. So how do you think, given Fremantle only have, so pick 15 right now, and I think their next pick is 76. Obviously, mm. they've got next year's picks. How can they make this work? I think, well, Lob seems to be out the door, mm. so, and the dogs are into him. So hopefully we can get there first out of that, because Lob sort of, luckily for us, has played a better year than he had last year. So he's resurrected his value a bit more, I think. You. That, yeah, I mean, I even get that's, that. And then the future first on top of those two, and then yeah. Meek maybe if they have interest in Lloyd Meek, because apparently because mm. he's one that's in a tough spot because he's a pure ruck, not a forward ruck, and we've already got Darcy. So he wouldn't really add much to the deal. I think I think mm. he's actually a decent young player, um, but in terms of trade value, is mm. virtually nothing. So to rely on Rory Lobb getting say pick eleven or twelve, as a neutral fan, I look at that and it may happen, but I think surely the dogs don't do that. Mm. Do well, I mean? apparently they've offered him a four-year deal. Yeah. But yeah. yeah that, that is the, best case scenario. And yeah. the thing is that as well, because it seems like this is, if we get in guys like Angus Brayshaw and Luke Jackson, I'm happy to land those people, but it sounds like it's going to be at the expense of a few players that have sort of where we've really built the culture that you've seen this year. Like Griffin Logue, for example, someone, a local boy we drafted in pick seven. He's been a part of that young group that's all grown together and built what we have now. He's a big part of that. Sounds like we might be pushing him out the door to make this happen, which I think is very detrimental. Mm. More even to the broader culture of the club, not even just what Logue himself brings as a good swing man who can play both forward and back. And then Blake Akers is another example of that. Apparently we've only offered him a one-year deal off the wow. back of his very good form this year. Wow. And there's some clubs back ace for the throw and three-year deals at him for more money. And the thing is like that is like guys like Acres, we've brought in a few guys like that that are undervalued at other clubs. We've brought them in and given them a role and made them really good, like Acres, Travis Collier, even Will Brody, Jordan Clark. Mm-hmm. Like the culture of having those undervalued guys and a young group we've grown together 
like losing some of that the other guys will see that we've been willing to give that up to land the big fish so mm. i feel like it could be detrimental culturally depending how we go about it yeah i agree with all of that that was what i was going to sort of pull that the thread was what i was going to pull next but i guess on the whole what do you what do you want for him to do here I still want Jackson, I must say, because yeah. I think him and Das, especially because I think Luke Jackson still has the potential to be a very good key forward mm. that can complement in the ruck when da- him and Darcy switch. Yeah. So I think Luke Jackson's that raw and that talented and that much potential it's worth going for still, especially because we have the salary cap. Yeah. Because of guys like Chero leaving, Rory Lobb leaving's on good money. Mm. Some, a few of the young guys haven't signed extensions yet, so I think there's an opportunity to spend some money there. Yeah. It is it is a dangerous ploy. I think just I think of how many times a team has really blown the budget to get a player, and and I wonder mm. how many times it's really resulted in flags and stuff like that. So that's probably just a little bit of uh. concern I would have. Um, and and from a West Coast perspective, because we are still going for Jackson as well, apparently. As definitely, you should. yeah, definitely a player of need. My concern is what's it going to cost aside that is entering a rebuild phase, needs young talent, and he fits the bill in terms of what, like, we yeah. need a Ruckman, and he's talented, and he's... Um, would you trade one it. straight up for him? Yes, I would. Yep. I think, yeah, if you if you drafted Luke Jackson at pick one, if he entered the open draft, yeah, you'd be happy with that. He probably yeah. would be taken with pick one. I, I think he would cost more than that. Yeah, probably. I, I think Melbourne would ask for more than that, and that's where I would... That's my reluctance. Yeah pick say one and 20 our first two picks in this year's draft i think it's just risky mm. really risky um and you've taken that risk before on someone like a tim Kelly. yeah yeah but i, th- I think we yeah, you're in a different position than you were when you took that yes yeah Kelly position we'd have to apply yeah. for an exemption to even go for it because we mm. have to use our pick one but apparently mm. there's these arbitrary rules where we can just apply for an exemption and we can <laughs> do it and i think the article i read suggested that because jackson's 21 or 22 we're yeah. likely to get that granted yeah. because you know you're not. It's not like a 28 year old yeah. um, established player again. So, um, so it sounds like we both have a little bit of reluctance. It's just is um, it's a tough one. There's a lot of risk and reward involved mm. in the in the deal like this for Jackson. Um, we'll talk about another ruckman in Victoria. Um, Brody Grundy might be potentially leaving Collingwood. Who do you think would be a good suitor for a 28 year old out of favour ruckman who's probably going to He's still contracted on heavy dollars and Collingwood would probably have to pay some of it. But I'm struggling to think of sides that would really... The one that comes to mind for me is Port Adelaide because he's a South Australian. He is, yeah. And there was talk of him going home before Collingwood gave him the big mother load deal that they did. Yeah. So that option could be back on the table. Adelaide, Port Adelaide are probably in need of a ruck, I guess, because Scotty Lysette's been on and off the park. Yeah. He's getting a bit older. They don't really have much ruck depth beyond him, especially mm. after trading Laddams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose the port makes sense because I think they'll, even though it's been a poor year for them, still consider themselves in the mix next yep. year. Like that's the way their list profile is, and they've already recruited young guys before. They just had the shit first five weeks. Other than that, they've probably been about the mark for yeah. finals team if it wasn't for that first five weeks. Well, that's true. Let's say they pinched two wins, they'd be in the eight right now. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, still mm. a fair way off their own expectations. But yeah. Um, the, the other one that comes to mind is GWS, who like constantly need a Ruckman. Um, and it does seem logical because another name, I, I'm probably bringing him up preemptively, but Taranto is a name you're mm. going to bring up in this segment. And I mm. think Collingwood is a logical place for Taranto for me. Yeah. Especially because it sounds like they're pushing Dugowie out, so he'd come in and yeah. play that Dugowie bullish forward, well, mid-forward type role. I'd almost even question just the GWS's need, though, even though I was the one who brought him up. I just think like for a side that's just made the bottom four... Um, especially if Taranto goes the other way. Uh, um, I suppose they could get Grundy and they'll still have a very strong draft hand if they mm. lose Taranto. Uh, Richmond is another side I think could make a play for Taranto. Um, Collingwood have picks 14, 42, 46 and 47, so not a good draft mm. hand this year. So even Grundy I don't think has much value if they're offloading him for money. Uh. So that will be tough to get it done, I think, for Collingwood, whereas Richmond have 11, 19 and 29 mm. Um Potentially Liam Baker, another t- player that could be on the move back home. Um, and then future picks, plus they've drafted heavy. They like, took five yep. early picks last year. So I think in terms of the ability to get it done, I think Richmond's probably better. But it, obviously, Toronto needs to decide. Curveball team for Grundy's Geelong. Because they're always yep. needing a... Rock. Money, I think, will be the issue yeah, there. Yeah, definitely. Mm. 
especially you'd hope yeah. otherwise that would yeah. qualify for an investigation oh yeah um not a review a full investigation yeah that's right uh thoughts on stars like dusty and buddy where do you think that they could end up buddy is an interesting one i like because i because considering he's a free agent i for Freo, I wouldn't mind having a swing because mm. if we, like front load him, we can af- like we're in a position where we can make a tilt for flag. Our key forwards mm. aren't as consistent as my guards. <laughs> in other words, not very consistent. Like even in even eight, pause. like even Buddy's out kicked Leroy Lobb, who was our leading goal kicker this year. Buddy's yeah. kicked more goals. Buddy with a midfield like ours giving him service. It'd, be able to produce i think give us something to work with you'd think it would rely on failing to get jackson mm. you'd think yeah i'd yeah if you couldn't probably pull off him and jackson gross <laughs> story of your life <laughs> um yeah yeah there's a bit of talk on the eagles board discussing the buddy franklin to west coast i just think that would probably be the most <laughs> be the most counterintuitive thing <laughs> yeah. you could do in the eagles current position uh, the only reason i'm even suggesting it for freo is because we're in a position where we could win the flag in the next yeah. two years while he's still got anything in the tank he's from wa mm. and we've got the money to spend in yeah. theory if we don't land these other whales we're after i'd be interested to see what compensation that would generate because it would be based on his contract which would uh, be high dollars but probably two years yeah that'd be a thing you'd You'd think Sydney would be happy to let him go if they're getting a... Yeah, fir- even mid- a top 30 pick. Yeah. Like, that's a bloody good deal for a 35, 36-year-old yeah. player. Um, and then, you know, if, if Buddy does make a move, then you'd think that opens the door. I, I think there's talk about Dusty. I have no idea where he's going to go. Yeah. I think Sydney makes a lot more sense than GWS. I think, yeah, he fe- feels like he just wants to get out of the footy bubble. Yeah, like interesting. A- yeah. I don't really have any idea what his intentions are, but Richmond mm. seemed to open the door for him to leave with their, some of their comments. I think Hardwick said he wouldn't. Uh, he'd forgive him but maybe maybe he's just talking about yeah. us but but Dusty to the Swans makes sense for all mm. parties there I think uh, do you know what I mean like Sydney Sydney are in, in the mix yep. to get Dusty as a like impact forward yeah. for a couple of years like yeah it'd be a good one 